Okay, so here is where I'm at with the programming side of things. I have a, this grey cable plugged into the four pin socket there on the um, on the controller. I'll see if I can point to it. It's just down here. Now, once that's plugged into the controller, you um, plug the USB side into the laptop and you just have to have the software installed. Uh, make sure the controller is turned on before you log in um, and once you connect there we have it so what I've been looking at is in the parameters I've been getting used to what all these settings mean and I have a feeling that you could actually turn up the amps and all sorts um, on the controller so which might be possible um, for getting up hills a bit faster which I might consider once I have the other battery pack in and I've put two strands of 240 amp rated cable so there's no heat generation when I pull about 400 amps. Um, so once I figure out what settings affects that, I'll have a look into it. Um, it's just for better hill climbing, really, especially once I have the sleeping pod trailer towing behind me. Now if I scroll down, what I've been looking at is two things. One of them is the over voltage, which is 55 volts. That's no problem for lithium batteries. Now, I wonder if I could turn it up a bit. Uh, that's the question, because if this type of regen is just simply turning the motor into a generator and pumping electricity back into the um, battery, uh, that's where that over voltage comes in handy. Uh, there's a chance that I could get away with a higher volts um, because what I'm finding out is that when I'm on a heavy brake, when I brake heavy, uh, the re that that kind of uh, regen cuts out and uh, it just goes back to it just goes to drum brakes and I'm relying on drum brakes only. So um, it would be nice to try and figure out a way to make that smoother. Now the other thing I was looking for was under voltage. So when the battery reaches a certain level, does it does the motor cut off automatically? Now, from what I understand on these settings, there is no under voltage, which means I could run the lithium batteries their whole cycle and um, and not have any problems with a cutoff mode, which is good news in some ways. It means that uh, it means that I can get the full cycle out of the battery uh, as far as the BMSs will permit. So probably about twenty percent. Um, discharge now with that being said i would assume that the dc to dc converter in the charge controller is what was not allowing the dash to work under 40 uh, over 40 over 56 volts and under and i would assume there's a low voltage cutoff where the converter just doesn't work um now i think this is what was happening with the g -Wiz with the lithium phosphate batteries at Pedalese, they couldn't get their dash to work until it dropped below 56 volts. So I have a feeling that they could get around this by just putting an auxiliary 12 volt battery in place. So I've done some calculations on the expected mileage on the GWIS. Now ignore all the complicated <laughs> calculations, you can probably work it out if you read through it slowly. But what I worked out was that with my current capacity of 218.4 miles, I could achieve 76.19 miles uh, if I was theoretically able to use that 100% charge. Now running at a 70% discharge, I should be able to do 53.33 miles. Now double that if I only get 16 packs and I should have a range of around 107.7 miles which isn't bad. Now if you were what this actually works out at um, after doing a few more calculations is that 35 miles per 100 amp hours is the expected range using the GWIS at the very least in eco mode. What I've also discovered is that if I do a simple calculation of 35 times by, so if I was to go for the, um, if I was to ever get funding or if I was able to fund it myself and pay for the three 500 um, amp hour, uh, milliamp hour cells, 
so that's 3.35 times by 8.07. The total range is a whopping 282.45 miles. So say we can only use down to 20% discharge, so that would be times by 0.8. We still have 225.96 miles, which puts you just below the range of a Chevy Volt. At 238, I believe it was. It will cost me around 5,000 maximum to build this car, including chargers, etc., batteries, and and uh, and that works out pretty well. Uh, I mean, 225 is if I was buying the expensive batteries. Now, my total range, if I go, if I stick with this um, recycled battery route would be, so let's say 13 times by 2.1, 27.3 times by 18, so that gives me 491.4 amp hours um, of total capacity, so 4.91 um, times by 30, yeah, so 4.91 times by 35, that gives me 171.85 miles now times by 0.8 assuming that we can use this charge down to 80 percent that's 137 miles um for under five grand any other cars on the market right now will probably cost you upwards of 15 grand to achieve the same range now i'm going to have i've ordered my charges so i've so i have ordered uh 3000 watt two 3000 watt 54 amp modules and these combined uh, I'll hook to a type 2 uh, connector and I can charge from any 7 kilowatt fast charger on the road so that would give me a 108 amp hour charge and this is uh, and, and this means that I could achieve an extra 35 miles approximately per hour of charging so I could increase the range comfortably in a day by another 70 miles so I could do 200 let's say I, I could probably do 200 miles in this car um, combined with charging and I think for the average person they would not need anywhere near this capacity um, so yes I, I look forward to traveling with this in the summer and seeing just how far I can push it